I'm HP and this is my review of Warped Tour Vans. I wanted to review some bands so you guys would know what you're looking at before you get there. Which bands should you listen to? Which bands might you like? Because it's an overwhelming amount of bands, right? I mean, there's no way you can listen to even half of them. So maybe this will help you guys pick what bands you might want to listen to. The first band that I want to talk to you about is Too Close to Touch. The first time that I heard this band was on Connect Tour, which was I the Mighty's first headlining tour, and it was an amazing lineup. The feeling of the camaraderie on that tour was just amazing, and I just have to give it to I the Mighty for putting together the best lineup for that show. But what I left from that show with was a new love for Too Close to Touch who I had never heard of before and I just realized that they are from Lexington, Kentucky which if you watch my channel the last band that I reviewed Picturesque is also from Lexington, Kentucky so Kentucky is pumping out some good music these days guys. I really love going to a show and falling in love with an opening act that I've never heard of before. It's one of the best things about live music in my opinion is to fall in love with a band from the stage. I have found a few of my very favorites this way. It was a great show. There was no stage. I was up front and the bands are literally two feet away from me. We could have open dialogue, you know, conversations while they're setting up and that's one of my favorite memories as far as concerts go. I couldn't have been happier with that experience. When I left the show, I looked up too close to touch because they had left such a large impression. I was already in love with their music before I even hit play on the recorded version of their song, of any of them. I did love their sound, but what really made me fall for this band was the way that Keaton would walk into the crowd and place his hand on people's shoulders and sing directly to them as if nobody else mattered. He was singing this song to that person at the time and then he would move on to someone else and sing another line to someone else. And it wasn't super aggressive. He got really passionate in some parts of songs, but they were areas where passion was necessary and it was altogether just a great experience. And also Kenny, the drummer, the facial expressions that he makes when he plays the drums are almost like an animated character. It, he's so goofy and just eccentric and I, I love that. So those were the two things that really left an impression on me about this band upon seeing them live, along with they had a great sound. This album feels like sunshine and summer, but it also kind of feels like stick it to them. I really like to listen to it when I need a good pick me up, but it's also really good at helping work out some rage if you're in that kind of situation. It's got a good variety and it has a good flow from start to finish. They start out with Someday. I don't really want to describe every song on this album, but Pretty Little Thing is their star track of this album and it was the perfect first single. It was the first song that they made a video for and that was really smart marketing because it's probably the best radio track that they have on the album. It would do well on radio, I think. It has this super poppy hook that just warms my soul. Even though the lyrics are about a toxic relationship, it's still really upbeat, but I don't feel like that's a fallacy. He's talking about this girl and she's horrible for him, she's horrible at relationships, and she's just all around bad for this guy, and so he's like, it's alright, I don't need this. I don't need you. Of course he describes some of the things that she does, but in the end the impression that I got was he was okay with being done with this relationship. So it being an upbeat song isn't really contradictory to the lyrics, even though it's about a toxic relationship. Pretty Little Thing is one of my favorites, but not my very favorite. It's a very good track and I think most people will enjoy it. Perfect World comes immediately after Pretty Little Thing and I feel like this is really perfect placement for this song because it's talking about in a perfect world you would want to come back to me. That's the general mindset of the song, is in a perfect world you would still want me. And I feel like it's really good placement because it comes right after Pretty Little Thing where it's essentially saying, bye bye you're crazy. But sometimes when you end a relationship, even if you know it was the right move and it was on your terms, even being happy with that situation at the time and even later on knowing that you made the right decision, after a few days that feeling kind of sets in like, well why don't they want me back? Why aren't they calling me and texting me and trying to get me back? I'm valuable. And so I think it's more about, I wish you wanted me, than, hey, I want you back. 
After that song comes The Deep End, which is by far my favorite track on the album. I actually painted something inspired by the song, and I might post a picture of that in this video somewhere if I'm feeling super sherry later when I'm editing. But it's about having trouble dealing with things that you've done and people pushing you too far. It's amazing. This is one of my all-time favorite songs. I love it, and it's one of the main reasons why I love this band so much because lyrically, vocally, instrumentally, this song, it all around has a great feeling to it and I can really immerse myself in this song and I think that most people have been in the situation that this song is about so you can relate to it even if you're not in it at the moment. The music matches the feelings of the lyrics perfectly. I feel like that's one of the magic things about music is when a band can make the sounds you're hearing match the lyrics to create the feeling that, that the lyrics are speaking about and I feel like that's really the case with the song and I'm so proud of this song. It's one of my favorites. I don't want to speak a ton about The Chase. I want to go ahead and say that a majority of people will really like this song because Killing Quinn is on it, but it's not one of my favorite tracks. There's nothing wrong with it. It sounds good. It's a good song. So, you know, if you're a fan of his, then maybe that's a good place for you to start with listening to Too Close to Touch's music. And after that is Nerve Endings, which is the title track of his album. And I feel like it's a really powerful track and I'm, I feel like they made a good choice in making it the title track of the album and that this body of work really represents that title very well. The analogies and metaphors that they use are just delightful to my dorky little heart. But essentially this song is about going through a really tough time and just being persistent in the fact that you're not going to give up and you're not going to let other people defeat you and you're not going to let people see you fall down and not get back up and it's about struggle and I think that most people can relate to this song and it's really beautiful. It, they have a video for this song as well. Okay, I'm not going to say a ton about Restless either. I'm just going to say that it really feels like a nighttime drive type song to me and just leave it at that. You can, you know, do what you want with that, think what you want. <laughs> and it's good. I don't dislike any of the tracks on this album, just to clarify that. After Restless is Hell to Pay, it's got a lot of spite to it, and rightly so with the topic, and it's a good track. They also have a feature on it, and I'm not really sure who that person is. Are Kelly Smith? I don't know. I'll put the name of that person here. After Hell to Pay is Air and Me, and there are lines in the song that just hurt like take the air out of me give it to someone more deserving and it it hurts my soul that any human being could ever feel that way but i know that a lot of people struggle with thoughts like that and um that's not the theme of the whole song that's just a line that stands out to me so don't expect that whole song to be depressing there are some really killer lines in the song like my heart's astray and i adore you and the way he says i adore you just oh gets me every time just the way it's vocalized and it's not some crazy out there notes he's hitting it's just the passion behind it and that's one of the things that I really love about this band is that every single member of this band delivers their portion of the song so passionately in the areas that it's necessary and it's it's not overdone it's in the perfect spots and it's just so overwhelmingly beautiful the unrecorded stuff live it doesn't matter wherever you hear this you're gonna hear passion in the right places and to the right measure and that's just oh i'm getting so excited about this guys this is one of my favorite bands of all of the bands this is this is in my top five the next track on this album is called sinking so long and here's where i want to really hit hard with the fact that the order and the progression of this album could not be more perfect and this song is about self-doubt and again about struggling trying to find the worth of yourself and the worth of yourself to other people just you know having a lot of questions about yourself and what you appear to be to others you know that's, that's an important part of life that everybody goes through sometimes more than once not naming any names 
This is my theory, and I hope that ultimately most people can come to the same conclusion. You're worth what you decide you're worth, not what someone else decides you're worth. If you decide that you're worth a lot, and you deserve a lot, and you want to live up to that expectation, you're going to do more for yourself, and you're going to expect more out of the people in your life, therefore making your life more enjoyable and complete. So do that. And the last track on the album is called Until I Collapse. Before I even go into anything else, I just want to say that when I hear the song played live, it feels like the end. It may be my connection to knowing the album's order, but I don't feel that way. I, he gets so exasperated in, in his delivery of this song, and that's how it's recorded as well. And it's so powerful to me. He's, he's running out of breath, and he's breathing so heavily, and he's having a hard time getting it out, and that is so powerful when used the right way, and, and it is used the right way in the song. What I actually wrote was, this song is a perfect ending to the album, and to hear them perform it live is something magical. It feels like the end, like breathlessness after something strenuous. So to me, that's what that song feels like, is just being so overly exhausted, and that's what it's about, is just being overly exhausted and just saying that I'm not going to give up until I just can't go anymore. And it's another one of those really powerful songs, but also the perfect ending. And it's kind of like a cliffhanger, like, will he collapse? So I'm super excited to hear what more Too Close to Touch has to offer to us musically. And they are actually recording another album. I'm super excited to see them for the fourth time at Warped Tour. Not seeing them at Warped Tour for the fourth time, but seeing them live for the fourth time at Warped Tour. They always put on a great show and I'm sure that their Warped energy will be great. And I'm really loving seeing their growth because this is a band that really deserves it because they have the talent and the intelligence. Oh, before I go, I also have to say that they're so super nice. Keaton actually stopped me at a gas station before a show one time to tell me that he liked my shirt. I was wearing an Eye of the Mighty shirt, but he talked to me for a good few minutes and was super nice and I love the closeness. Like that night I was in the front center so he really got up in my face a lot. <laughs> like his body was in my face and I'll throw a clip of that in. I've got like a 10 second clip that's just, it's insane. It's not zoomed in at all. whacked in the head a few times but yeah they're really nice guys Kenny's a really nice guy too those are the only two that I've had the pleasure of speaking with but they were both super nice and Kenny's always so enthusiastic I think that's all that I have to say I love you guys and I'll see you very soon if you're new to my channel I do underground music reviews I also do a series called musical questions where I ask youtubers questions that come from song lyrics and they answer in a somewhat silly manner and it's always a bunch of fun and I have also recently started doing a little bit of popular music reviews. And I am also doing How to Get Your Music Noticed, which is tips for independent artists on how to help grow their fan base using the internet, social media, and things like that. If you like this video, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you like my face and you want to see more of it, hit the red subscribe button. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.